So these come-alongs really made a big difference, I believe. Without these, this wall, I think, would have easily fell out into the, <laughs> over the hill. But now i got to move them down. I'm going to move this one down to probably here. And just work my way down this wall, moving these come-alongs. This is going to be a pain in the butt, but I think they need moved at least this once uh, before. I don't know. I may be able to let off of them, but that'd be a little too risky, I think. Maybe I'll move every other one. We'll see how it acts. But I am going to move this one. Man, that's sketchy. Here we go. One. So here's the two air chisels I picked up for this job. They were both bought from Harbor Freight and less than $20 each. Uh, much less, I believe. This one is a larger or longer barreled air chisel. It is 3,000 blows per minute at 90 PSI. And this shorter one is, I think, 4,500 blows per minute at 90 PSI. Now, I bought this smaller one with the intention of using it to chip mortar once they're out of the wall. But come to find out, it was just easier to use a hammer and a chisel. So, this one, though, is my primary chisel that I'm removing the blocks from the wall with. Um, I've showed it absolutely no love. I've abused it, to be honest. Uh, just don't care and trying to get this job done. I'm running it probably 140 PSI, and uh, there for a while I wasn't oiling it. It says oil daily, and they mean that. Um, it locked up on me once, and I had to put a little oil in it and beat it around. But I've oiled it since then and had no trouble with it. Uh, this barrel also likes to work loose on this one, so when I'm done with this job, I'll probably pull it down and lock tight that on so it doesn't work loose. But that's the air chisels that I'm using, and I'll have to say that I'm more than happy with their performance, especially at the price that they are. Um, they make short work of mortar, that's for sure, especially this little longer uh, blowed hammer. There you go, that's what I'm using. Removing these blocks on this wall up to this point has been a pretty tough job, as you can imagine. They're abrasive and heavy. I believe your average block weighs anywhere from 28 to 30 pounds each. This wall has, you know, some blocks are heavier, spaced throughout it, some are lighter. Uh, there's a variety of different types of block in here. And I did a quick calculation on the light side of what this wall would weigh minus the mortar and it come out to around 16,800 pounds and 
of course that's much lighter than what it actually weighs but imagine that sitting out on the edge of this non-reinforced pad you know no wonder it broke and uh you know that's one of the main reasons that i'm you know not going to go back with block um, on this wall I've showed this dolly before, but I got this at Harbor Freight also, and I've been more than satisfied with this thing. I think I paid 50 or 50 or $60, something like that, for this one. It's been great. It really has. I can't complain at all. You couldn't build one for the cost of this thing. So I've noticed there's three or four different types of block in this one wall. Uh, some are like this one. Actually, the majority of them are just like this one. Uh, some are much heavier, thicker walls. Some have different type ends, but the majority, like I say, are just like this. And this is a really neat block. Um, it has like a handle built into it. At least that's what I assume. I know probably the block guys are going, yeah, that's been, they've done that for 50 years. But I did not know. So that's pretty neat. I'm assuming that's the top much thinner here nowhere to grab your fingers just slide off but on this side it's actually got a couple raised areas so you can grab it the block is rougher on this side and smoother on this side so I thought that was neat didn't didn't know that so I want to take just a second and talk about these overalls that I got on for those that are in a colder climate or are interested these are by far my favorite overalls that I've ever owned. I've owned Carhartt, you know, I've owned Burn before, and they've always been really good. That's who makes these, B-E-R-N-E, Burn. I've given these a cold supper I don't know how many times. I haven't tore them at all. they just now starting to fray on the heels. I've had no zipper issues with them at all. I like the bib type, the type with no sleeves, simply because, you know, you can always put on a jacket, but if you buy overalls with sleeves in them, you're stuck wearing them with sleeves in them because you can't take those down and tie them around your waist. That looks silly. So, I love these overalls. They're, they've been great, and I'm going to buy another pair simply to put in the closet for when these do wear out. I've yet to tear them, and uh, I'd have to say I'm impressed. I've owned Carhartt, and I'd have to say that these are just as good, if not better, in my opinion. I know that's uh, probably a highly debated uh, subject, but these are pretty good, I'll have to say. Uh, so try you a pair if you're interested. Uh, B-E-R-N-E. Hey, you got a lot of lock. Yeah. You got a whole lot of lock. My favorite is the chicken. It's like the easiest, isn't it? It is easy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there'll be more to do. Got a lot of blocks come down, so you'll get your chance. How full do you want to fill it? Well, it's pretty full. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty full. Cool.
up to this point on this wall, I've been doing all the air hammering, and I've been handing the blocks to my son to, you know, pack and set. And uh, he wanted to try the air hammer. He found out that he liked that doing that better, and uh, I ended up getting to pack the blocks and uh, and stack them. But he done his part on the first half of this wall, so I'm not complaining. Before I ever even started this job, I planned on saving every block that was salvageable out of this wall and to chip them all and stack them all. That way they were done and I didn't have to worry about them anymore. I knew it would add quite a bit of time to the job the demolition to have to do this ahead of time but I just wanted this off my shoulders because I know that some of these blocks I'm gonna have to reuse when I build the end walls So I'm on the last row, plus a few of these blocks in the corner. It's the row I've been waiting for for the last two weeks. Feels good to get this far. To have every block that's come off there cleaned and stacked already, uh, a lot of work. Still got to get this end wall out, which I'm not too concerned about. Not that many blocks in this wall compared to you know, that. And then I got to start working on this end here, which is a little dangerous given the way it's cracked and busted. And we got a stair step crack there, and one there, and then nothing supporting it here. So we're going to have to come up with something to support that and then start taking down these blocks from the top. And then work my way back, uh, keeping in mind that I'm going to be tying back into this wall with block. So I'm going to have to work out how I'm going to do that. But it's going to have a heck of a view if I get some good windows in here. Check that out. Really nice when the foliage gets on. So strange. So 
So this is my old saw. It's a high point drive or a worm drive skill saw. This is the eight and a half inch version. It's the model 825. Weighs a ton, you know, all aluminum body. You know, it's a heavy, it's a heck of a saw, but I went to use it the other day and it just kind of, it basically, the brushes are wore out of this thing. It just uh, tripped a breaker and stinks. So obviously, bad shape. It needs new brushes. Well, I'm gonna unplug that. Um, <laughs> it needs more than new brushes, but it needs brushes and it needs the caps. Obviously, you see, no blade break. It just doesn't work. So I picked up a new one. This is the Skill Saw Mag 77. It's a magnesium version. This is the seven and a half inch blade uh, and so much lighter than that, than the old model. I haven't even plugged it in, so let's plug it in and see how it works. Hopefully this one doesn't smoke like my old one. Well, I gotta trip the breaker, then I'll show you. Shoot, that saw stinks. All right. Much nicer. Got a blade break on it. Just a safer, nicer saw. You're insulated with the plastic handles. It's lighter. I needed a saw for framing up this partial wall that I'm going to do. It's got the sky hook on it. And uh, you know, just favorable over this table saw for quick cuts. I'm not a wood worker by any stretch of the imagination and I prefer to use one of these for just quick and dirty stuff. So there you go, picked me up a new saw. So we got a lot of Peanut the Squirrel fans out there. Uh, I'm a big fan of her myself, and I want to give you a little update on her. Now, late February, early March, as far as I've read, is squirrel mating season around here. And if you didn't know, Peanut is a female, and very likely to become pregnant and have a litter of squirrels. So me and Elizabeth have been talking and trying to see you know, what's best for her. And we've decided that probably we should step back from peanut a bit. Of course, we're going to feed her and water and give her water. But as far as uh, petting her and interacting with her really close, uh, we're probably going to stop that, at least for a while. And the reasons for that is we want to give her the best chance of survival that she can have. Most squirrels don't make it through their first year without getting you know, eaten by some other animal. They're pretty low on the food chain. And she will not need our help to raise a litter of squirrels nor do I want, you know, uh, five squirrels running around here that are, you know, acclimated to human interaction. Uh, we want them to go out in the wild and, you know, do their thing. So you'll still see Peanut around, you know, this is her home, but uh, probably no more squirrel acrobatics, at least for a while anyway. If she runs up my leg, yes, I'll give her a back rub. But other than that, uh, I'm not going to be trying to coax her, and Elizabeth's not either, to just pet her. We just think, for her, it's probably the best, uh, you know, the best option. Just to let her do her thing, raise her babies on her own, because she doesn't need our help. There you go, little peanut the squirrel update. Of course, we'll still film her, but we're not going to be, you know, holding her as much. I'm not going to say never.
I'd think if I drilled the right hole. So with this wall out, this roof has really become a big sail, and in order to keep it from you know, lifting or blowing off, I've got chains, concrete anchored, 3 8 16 stud, running through the 4x4 here, and about 8 places down through here. So it's not going anywhere, and, and several of them I've got turnbuckles to tension these chains just to keep it from getting that initial movement. So chains all the way down through here, I think, will be plenty good enough to keep this thing from taking off. Not to mention, the roof's bolted to the rest of the building. Alright guys, that's it this week. Glad to have that wall out before it fell on its own and took half the roof with it. And that was an unreal amount of weight to move. Not just once, but you know, you move the block from the wall to the ground, then you move the block to a place where you chip it, you chip it, stack it out of your way, then you load it and move it outside where you can stack it again, where you'll move it again to rebuild the wall here in the front and then the partial wall in the back that I'm gonna have to do. So at 15, or at, what I say, 28 to 30 pounds a piece times, I don't know, six to 700 blocks, that's a lot of weight. So, bust out the pad after these two walls are out. Got an engineer coming to look at the foundation to give me some options on what I can do, depending on the type of wall that I build back here, uh, rebuild back here. Got a French drain that I got to put in on the upper side of the building to try to control water because water can actually move under a building and it stays wet on this upper side. So I got to get a good drain up there just to try to help prevent uh, this from you know, happening again. Not that that was, you know, anything that contributed to this, but we don't want similar issues on the upper side of the building. So, a lot to do, that's for sure. Huge thanks to all the people who supported me on this project. It's definitely appreciated, as you can imagine. I would not be able to do it in any reasonable amount of time frame uh, without your support. So, thank you very much. And if you'd like to help on this project, you can. The links are in the description. Huge thanks to all my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Like I always say, I enjoy sharing this stuff with you. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.